Hi everyone, this is Monique with VGA Network, and I'll be showing you how to install Microsoft SQL Server 2012 Service Pack 1 on Windows Server 2012 R2, Microsoft's newest OS platform. First thing you'll want to do is load Microsoft SQL Server 2012 CD, um, either through an ISO image or if you have purchased SQL Server, um, put it in the server and we'll install a SQL Server. So first thing you'll want to do is go ahead and click on Setup. and let it go ahead and load SQL Server 2012. So here you'll be giving the main standard installation for SQL Server. It's the same layout as uh, the 2008 version. So you can go ahead and take a look real quick and browse over the planning portion. Then just go ahead and click on the installation. Now here you'll be given several different options. You'll be given a new SQL Server standalone installation or add features to existing installation. Uh, a new SQL Server failover cluster installation. Add node to a SQL Server failover cluster. Or upgrade from SQL Server 2005, SQL Server 2008, or SQL Server 2008 R2. Here we will not be implementing a failover cluster and we will not be doing a stand uh, upgrade from 2005 or 2008. We'll be doing a new fresh installation. So let's go ahead and choose new SQL Server standalone installation. And allow that to load up. Here it'll run the check rules operations and as you can see the operations completed passed and you can show the details. Um, set up an administrator, set up account privileges, restart computer, and so forth. So go ahead and click OK. For now, send feature usage data to Microsoft since not many people implement that. So check Next. And here it'll do the updates for you if you want to install the updates for SQL Server. And here I'll go ahead and choose Yes, so include SQL Server product updates. Select Next and allow the install setup files to complete. And as you can see, this is going relatively fast since it's only 26 megabits. Now that it has completed, it's going to be going to its next operation step. And here it'll do another rule check. Uh, basically it just goes over your you know, Fusion Active Template Library, um, validates SQL Server Registry Keys, Computer Domain Controller, .NET Application Security. I see the error for Windows Firewall. This is just a, a virtual server that I quickly spun off to do this. Um, walkthrough. And here, you know, depending on if you're in an enterprise environment, maybe you're running a Microsoft Windows Firewall, maybe you're using a third-party vendor like Trend Micro or Symantec or Kaspersky. So here we'll just click Next. Uh, here you're given a few options. You can do SQL Server feature installation for your role setup. You can do a SQL Server PowerPoint Power Pivot for SharePoint or the all features with defaults. Uh, I want to recommend this especially in an enterprise environment just because you'll want to change the service counts and implement your own credentials to keep track of. So here we'll do the SQL Server feature installation and click Next. Um, in this guide I'm going to be doing a database engine services um, depending on what you're going to be using your SQL Server for, obviously you'll be choosing different features like analysis service, reporting services, and uh, reporting services SharePoint. So here we'll be using SQL Server replication if you wanted to um, replicate to another server. 
uh, with another database and you want to keep them sync, you'd obviously set up SQL Server replication. Um, we'll go ahead and do reporting services native. We'll also go ahead and choose SQL Server data tools, client tools, connectivity, integration tools, client tools, backwards compatibility, the SDK, management tools, and SQL Server client SDK. And then on the shared feature directory, I'll be changing it because I created a different drive for SQL Server installation, so I'll be changing that to the D programs files. I will do um, Microsoft SQL Server, and the same for here, for D, change it to D, and do Program Files, Microsoft SQL Server. And obviously, depending on how your uh, setup is in your current enterprise environment, this will also be different for yourself. So go ahead and choose Next. and it'll go ahead and verify all the components that you'll be installing and here it does another installation rules and you can check the details and I'll see if you have Visual Studio 2012 and the current Microsoft Framework 3.5 installed so click next and here you can go ahead and change your instance name and we will I'm going to name this uh, Street Fighter I'll do on all caps. And when I go ahead and change the name instance, it'll automatically default the instance ID to the name instance. And since I went ahead and changed the shared root directory in the previous page, I'm also going to change the instance root directory to the D programs. And do program file. Microsoft SQL Server and then choose next and here it'll basically give you a summary of how much disk space it will require to install the SQL Server and the features that you selected obviously this will depend and change on um, what you have selected to install. So choose next. Here you can go ahead and change basically your service agents that will start on the computer. Um, you can basically go to your services.exe and see all these different services, the server agent, the database engine, uh, reporting services, the browser and you can specify the account names. Um, I'm going to leave them as the default but in an enterprise environment you may want to change the account name and even associate a password to it if you don't want um, certain individuals to start or stop those particular services. Maybe you just want the DBAs to handle that. Um, you can also change the collation but I'll be leaving it as SQL Latin 1 General CP1 CIAS as default. So go ahead and choose next. Um, here you have three different configurations that you will need to configure. Your server configuration, your data directories, and file stream. Now in this guide I'll be doing a mixed mode which here you can create a SA account pretty much like an admin account to this particular instance and you can use Windows Authentication. When you use Windows Authentication basically what you will do is once you've created your SQL Server you have your instance and maybe you have set up a few databases. Uh, you can sync this with Active Directory and you can create groups within your security logins and within those security login groups you can associate users within ADs to that security group. So here um, will be entering a password for your SQL Server authentication, basically your SA account. So uh, let me go ahead and change that to a different password that I'll remember. And here you can specify SQL Server Administrator. So I'll, I'll just add the current user, which should be the administrator account. We'll give it a minute to load.
and here you can see that it's uh, loaded the local administrator account. Uh, obviously, that's not best breakfast best practices. I wouldn't recommend loading the local administrator account to your SQL server. Uh, so let's go ahead and change to the data directories. And here, um, you can go ahead and uh, say, oh, SA password does not meet strong password requirements. Let, let me change that then. Okay, it looks like it liked that password. So let's go ahead and go to the data directories. Here you can specify where you want your data root directory, which is correct, deprogram files, Microsoft SQL Server. And then here, uh, you want to specify where your database is going to be located, your logs, your tempdb, your tempdb log, and your backup directory. Now I've created standalone drives for each of these, which is best practices. You'd never want to really have your database and your logs located on the same drive. You want to have them on separate drives. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to the K. And we'll make a new folder called data under there. And then here I'm going to change it. It, it defaults the logs to the database, but I don't, I don't want that. So let's go ahead and put that to the logs. We'll make a new folder, logs, hit OK. Um, tempdb, we'll put it to the tempdb drive, which is T, and it can folder tempdb, hit OK. It also redirects this as default to the T tempdb, but I don't want that. I want to change it to another drive. So I'll go to the tempdb backups, which is our U drive, make a new folder, tempdb backups, and hit OK. And then to the backup directory, we'll change that from D program files to dx backups, make a new folder, backups, and hit OK. Now they're on their own standalone drives and very uniquely organized. Here in your file stream, if you were doing Transact SQL Access, you'll want to go ahead and enable this here. But for this guide, I will not be enabling file stream for Transact SQL Access. So go ahead once you've configured your server configuration, data directories, and file stream to go ahead and click Next. Here it'll ask what you'll want for your reporting service is native mode. Um, you can install and configure the report server name remote. And then you can just install only. We'll go ahead and click next. Uh, here this is error reporting. We won't, won't enable to send the Windows and SQL Server error reports to Microsoft. So just go ahead and read through this and then just click next. Here, this will do the installation configuration rule check, so you can show details, uh, FAT32 file system, uh, cluster to cluster prepared instance, cross-language installation. It'll check and basically pass or fail you. Um, all of this came clear, so we'll go ahead and click Next. And here is basically a summary of the SQL Server 2012 features. Uh, verify and go through this diligently so you won't have to backtrack and just make sure that everything looks good, your directories look correct, um, the administrators that you gave access to for the SQL Server, your reporting services, your integrations, uh, just make sure your features that you've enabled are the features that you want and that you're not missing anything. And once this is done, just go ahead and click install. And then as you can see, it's going to start installing your SQL Server. Um, so right now I'm going to go ahead and pause this video and then resume once it has completed the install. Hi and welcome back everyone. This is Monique with VGANetwork.com and here I wanted to show you the completion of SQL Server 2012 on Windows Server 2012 R2. So here once you've done with the installation you'll see that the product has completed successfully with all of the features implemented and status of seceded. Go ahead and close out. Um, press X, X out on your setup and then you should be able to go ahead and hit the windows and through here you'll be able to go to your apps and from your apps you can go ahead and scroll over and you now will see your SQL Server tools. Go ahead and open up SQL Server Management Studio. 
I'll give it a minute to load up. And once this is completed, you'll be able to access your uh, SQL Server and on uh, future installation of applications should you need to create a database and have a point to your SQL Server, uh, you'll be able to do that. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you guys in the future. Please check out my, my other video cast at vganetwork.com. Thank you.